Hello all. We all know that statistics is a very important concept in data science. So statistics is broadly classified into descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. So if you want to get a clear idea on descriptive and inferential statistics, you can watch my video on that topic. I will give that in my description box. Let us now try to understand about central tendency. First, let us try to understand the terminology. Central tendency is nothing but about the center of the data. And also I have written three M's which may be familiar to all of you. Mean, median and mode. So when I say mean, median and mode, immediately you may think that I know this concept very well. Yes, we have done this during school days. There is no doubt about it. But it is very important to know how these mean, median and mode are helpful in the domain of data science. So let us start with the concept now. So what is central tendency? Central tendency is nothing but center of distribution of data, which is nothing but a single score representative of an entire data set. What do I mean by that single score representative of an entire data set? So if I give you an example, you can understand it better. Say I have this data. So there are eight numbers here. Instead of writing this with eight numbers, I want to write this with a single number, which is the representation of all these eight numbers. So what are the different ways to represent it as a single value? Let's quickly understand that now. So first, let's start with the mean. So we are not uh, trying to understand the definitions and all that is not really important. So mean is nothing but average of all the observations. So what is meant by that? Sum of all the observations divided by the total number of observations. Say there is a data 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have to find out the mean of it. So as I told you, mean is sum of observations divided by total number of observations. So first let us find the sum of observations. 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus, 4 plus, 5. Whole divided by how many observations are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5. So when you add everything, 3 plus 3, 6, 6 plus 4, 10, 10 plus 5, 15, 15 divided by 5 is equal to 3. So let us solve another problem. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 500. So let us calculate mean again. Sum of all the observations. So let us add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 500. Whole divided by how many observations are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So divided by 6. So when you add it, 505, 509, 512, 514, 515. Divided by 6, you will be getting 85.83. Now there is an important concept over here. See, when I had the data of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the mean value is only 3. When I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the mean value is only 3. But when a data 500 is added to it, the mean value is shifted from 3 to 85.83. What is the reason for this? Because there is 500 in this. What is this 500? 500 is an outlier. What is outlier? Extreme observation. 
what is the extreme observation so if you see all these numbers these numbers are closer to each other but this 500 is completely away from all these observations for now you can understand outlier this way in the upcoming video i will give a very good clarity on outlier so what we can understand about outlier 500 is an extreme observation which is different from the remaining five observations so when you find out the mean of this we get 85.83 so what is the takeaway here? We could see that when there is no outlier for this data, the mean value is 3. When there is an outlier, the mean value is shifted to 85.83. What is the reason for using mean in data science? Say I have a set of data. There are missing values in my data. So what is meant by missing values? Sometimes in our data set, there can be blank values. Blank. The observation may be blank. So how can I replace the missing values with? We can replace it with mean, median or mode for numerical. And when I say we can replace it, this is the challenge we are facing with the mean. When there is an outlier, there is a shift in the mean, which is not really a good idea. So what do we do when we have uh, outliers in our data set and also there are missing values? So it is not a good idea to replace the missing value in numerical column with the mean when there are outliers. Either you have to remove the outlier and replace it with the mean or we have to find out some other alternate way that we will see in the upcoming slides. So in case if I ask you to find out the mean for categorical data, can you do that? Say for example, I have a data of male male, female, male, male, something like that. Will I be able to find out the mean now? It is not possible. So we can find out mean only for numerical columns. We cannot find out new mean for categorical data. Let us now try to understand about median. So what is meant by median? Median is nothing but the middlemost term. So how to find out the middlemost term? Step number one, we have to sort it in ascending or descending order. If the number of observations is odd, then median is equal to n plus 1 by 2th term. If the number of observations is even, then median is equal to half of n by 2 the term and n by 2 plus 1 the term. So let us solve a problem to understand it better. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Should I sort it down? Not required because it is already sorted. If it is not sorted, you have to sort it down. So let me find the median now. How many observations are here? Five observations. So, what is the formula? N plus 1 by 2 th term. So, 5 plus 1 by 2. 6 by 2, third term. So, what is the ter third term here? You can see 1, 2, 3. Third term is median. Third term is median here and that is 3. So, for the same observation, when we found mean, it was 3. And when you get a median, median is also 3. Let us, let me show you a shortcut way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let me cancel this term. This. Cancel this. Cancel this. So what is the middle term now? Middle term is 3. So we can do in any way. So let me give you another problem now. 500, 1, 
two, four, five, three. Step number one, we have to sort it down. So one, two, three, four, five, five hundred. How many observations are here? One, two, three, four, five, six. So number of observations is even. So what is the formula? Half of n by two to term plus n by two plus one to term. So what do we have here? Six. So six by two means three. Six by two plus one means four. So third and fourth term average. Third and fourth term average. What is third term here? Three. What is fourth term here? Four. Three plus four by two, which is equal to three point five. So when you find this uh, median, be careful. You have to do on the sorted data only. So for the same data, we found mean already. What was the mean value we got? Eighty five point eight three. We have seen that the mean value got shifted from three to eighty five point eight three. That is why I said if there are missing values in your data set. It is not a good idea to replace the missing value with mean when there are outliers in your data set. So now, if you see this example, we got the median value as three point five, which is not affected much. Can you see that from three, it got changed to three point five? That is the beauty of median. When there are missing values in your data set. And if there are outliers in your data set, if you do not want to remove the outliers, but still you want to replace the missing value, then it is a good idea to replace the missing values with the median value. Again, here if I have the data male, male, female, male, male, can I find median? No. So we cannot find out. Mean and median for categorical data. So I have shown in the shortcut way to one cancel, five hundred cancel, two and five. Now middle terms are three and four, so the average is three point five. That would be the median. Let us now try to understand about mode. So one, two, two. Three, four, five. What is meant by more? Most frequently occurring value. So one appeared once, two appeared twice, three appeared once, four appeared once, five appeared once. So which is the number which has occurred maximum times? Two appeared twice. So what is the mode here? Mode is equal to two here. Let's solve another problem. One, two, two, three, three, four, five. So look into this one. One only one time, and four and five also only once. Two appear twice. Three appear twice. So two and three appear equal number of times and maximum number of times. So mode is equal to two comma three. Sometimes by mistake people. Solve it like two and three by two. No, don't do that. In mean and median, if you have seen, there can be only a single value, but in mode, there can be any number of values. Okay, so mode is two and three here. So I'm just giving an assignment to you: one, two, three, four, five, and five hundred. So what is the mode here? Just think about it for thirty seconds. So I hope you can find out the answer. Please write the answer in the uh, chat window so that we can discuss the answers. Okay. So now the question is about when to use what. So when there are missing values in your data set, if the missing values are numerical, we can replace it with a mean or median or mode. But 
If there are no outliers, we can replace it with mean. Otherwise, median or mode. But always I suggest you to go ahead with the median. If there are missing values in categorical data, then it is a better idea to replace it with the mode. Right? But here there would be a challenge when we have two modes, like the example that we have seen, two and three. And also when there are multiple modes, how can we face that challenge? Right? So try to find out answer for this question too and write it in the chat window. Okay. So now male, female, male, female, male. What is the mean here? What is the median? What is the mode? So can we find out mean and median for categorical data? No, right? So that is what we have already discussed. We can get only mode here. What is mode here? Male appeared twice, female twice, maximum is male. So mode is male here. So let us now compare mean, median and mode. Mean is nothing but sum of all observations divided by number of observations. Median is the middlemost number in the number set. And mode is the value that has a higher frequency in a given set of values. So if you have any questions in this concept, you can put it in the comment window, in the comment box, so that we can discuss about it. Thank you.